The South Congress podcast is a lifestyle show that sometimes crosses over into mature territory. The views expressed are those of the hosts and guests who come from different backgrounds and experiences. Listener discretion is advised. Yo, it's the South Congress podcast, episode 132. My name is Cameron. All right, so this is going to be like a regular thing again. Um, all of a sudden, we have like stuff to really talk about. Stuff's happening in the world, uh, in our world specifically. And so I want to make sure I'm able to keep everybody kind of up to date on what's going on. It's like a, a fast moving environment we're all of a sudden in. So, uh, yeah, I want to keep you guys up to date on that. Thank you to everybody who checked out last week's episode, uh, 131 writer's block talking about this brand new, uh, opportunity I got working with Spotify and the ringer, uh, writing on that side. So really the show is going to be more focused on that process. Uh, cause it's, it's really fun to talk about how these things are coming together. Um, specifically the things you don't get to hear about in these conversations I'm having, you know, with these different, uh, you know, people in the world of media and entertainment. So I want to make sure I take you into that world because it's been really fun. Um, first off, let's talk about LA. Um, you know, what, uh, what a journey. So the LA trip did not actually correspond with uh, the Spotify and the ringer thing. Like these things were actually separate from one another. They just happened to kind of meet in the middle. So, a couple of months ago, Rose was like, hey, um, there's a Kendrick show in L.A. Do you want to go with me? And anybody who knows me knows that I hate traveling. I hate traveling. Traveling is the worst. Um, but I was like, yeah, that sounds like fun. You know, uh, I like Kendrick. She's a huge Kendrick fan. She's got family out in L.A. Um, so it was like, yeah, let's make that trip. Let's go. So this was like May, June, something. And everything came together basically in, uh, well, here in September. So I get the, the ringer job in August, right? So it's like, okay, we have something to celebrate. Like we'll do like the, the nice dinner thing. We'll do like the champagne thing, all that. So, um, fast forward to the trip. We get to the airport. We leave it like, three o'clock in the morning from my place because the plane's taking off at like five 30. Um, my homegirl Liz stays super close to the airport. So whenever I'm flying out, I'll drop the car off over at her place uh, and then just take a Uber to the airport. Cause it's like, instead of paying 50, $60 for an Uber with her place is like 10, $13 or whatever. Right. So drop the car off at Liz's hit the airport of course, I'm wearing a Sting t-shirt because I like messing with y'all. Um, we hit the airport. Plane takes off, you know, 530. Um, we're in L.A. I think around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock their time, right? So get off the plane, get our baggage. Everything's going super smooth. Like TSA line was short because of how early it is. Um, no issues with the plane because, you know, I dealt with that back in February. That shit was crazy. No issues with the plane. Um, we get their baggages, like first ones uh, on the uh, on the carousel. So everything's great. Get the car. Go to uh, some shops like really close to the airport. Right. Uh, we want to get something to eat, but it's so early, like the diner's not open. Go around the corner. There's a dispensary. And they got like all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, they got like the Mike Tyson bites, uh, you know, looking like a Holyfield's ear that he sells that are edibles, I guess. Uh, they got all the different strains, all the different brands, like whatever you want, they got it, right? Um, if marijuana is your thing, it was like Disney World for weed. Um, I think I got like a lighter, right? So <laughs> end up leaving that spot, uh, and go into this diner where it was like, they got a big Kobe mural outside and a bunch of different Lakers and stuff. A bunch of people are out there. It's like early. It's nine o'clock on a Wednesday morning and the place is packed. So I'm still not prepared for LA prices on anything, right? So, uh, 
the meal is like, you know, it's like twenty, twenty five dollars a person for breakfast. She got the corned beef hash. I got like chicken sausage and eggs and toast. But they give you like the little champagne bottles and they're like twelve dollars a pop. And so my first meal in L.A., it's like ninety dollars between the two of us. I'm like, oh, good boy. OK, so we do that. And LAX is like, I don't know. Not physically far from the Airbnb, but it's like an hour, hour and a half. But the check-in isn't until 4 o'clock. So at this point, it's like 11 a.m. We got like five hours to kill. So we drive around a little bit. And if you've ever been to L.A., Hollywood's like, I don't know, 20 minutes or 10 miles or something from Echo Park. And Echo Park is like a little bit closer to where we were staying. So we end up doing like this duck boat paddle thing for like an hour, like to kill time. But it was fun. Like you're out there on the lake. You get to see like people coming out of school, people who aren't working, just like rolling around. So, you know, and it's 80, 85 degrees outside. It's really nice. Everybody's in shorts. It ain't too different from Texas climate wise. Right. So this is all Wednesday. So. We do that, go to Walgreens, we get some food, we get some stuff to drink, just because we know, like, hey, you know, we're going to be at the Airbnb chilling, like, let's get a bunch of stuff. So we do all that. It's literally, like, 4 o'clock when we roll up to the Airbnb. So we get there, and we meet the guy, because the guy who owns the place is actually staying there. So if you've played uh, GTA Five, you know how Franklin lives, like, up in the Vinewood Hills, and everybody's parked like on an art and you know it's like house after house and they're all kind of built different and they're built like into the the mountain or whatever and it'll be like five floors but they're all going vertical built into the side that's basically what everything was up there so the guy we're staying with he's a nice guy um actually i still need to like text him back saying we got back safe he's super sweet but uh uh, we're just talking to him and, and he has like a gym built into it. I said, like, hey, if you guys want to use a gym, you can. And everything here below is yours. And do you need like anything? I was like, we need some ice. But it's drank. Um, but no, he, he's really nice. And then we look him up and he's like, he's a TV writer and he writes uh, speeches for Biden. So like, you know, he's he's set. The house is like a $2 million house or whatever. Um, so we're there and then Rose gets a text. And it's kind of like, she looks at her phone kind of funny. I'm like, hey, you're like, what's going on? She was like, yo, um, the Airbnb reservation was canceled. I was like, oh? She's like, yeah, the reservation got canceled. Like, they they refunded me my money. I was like, when did this happen? She was like, it just happened. So she goes to talk to the guy. Apparently, one of the rules they have at the Airbnb is like no parties, right? Like, you know, whoever is supposed to stay here can stay here. You can bring a friend or two, but like no parties. Apparently, the people who were staying there like the day before, because the reason we couldn't check in early is because the people who were there a day before um, or there were people who were literally leaving the day that we got there. Right. So apparently they got mad at the no party rule and that they were going to be fine for it. So they left a bunch of trash around. And they gave him a bad review as a host on the Airbnb. And it's like, yo, why are you being so petty, dog? Um, but yeah, apparently they wanted to sort the situation out. They being the, uh, not the guy who lives there, but the people he rented out through. They wanted to, uh, they wanted to get the place clean and to make sure everything was sorted out, like on the, uh, the host versus guest side before they let anybody else stay there. So the guy was like, look, y'all are already here. I, I don't got nothing to do with none of that. If you want to just pay, uh, if you want to just pay outright, like you can pay me, not pay the fees and you'll be good. I'm immediately like, yo, I'm in a fucking slasher movie. This guy is going to kill us. <laughs> right? So I was like, yo, that's cool. Do that. I'm texting my boys right now about the situation. You text your mom right now. And I said, tell her this. 
Tell her where we're staying. Give her the address. Tell her what happened with the reservation. But text it to her, but tell her, Mom, if anything changes, I will call you, not text you. I'm not going to text you about any change. I'm going to call you. I'm going to FaceTime you and tell you specifically that something's different. Okay? So that way, ain't no, you know, chop our bodies up and steal the phone and say, hey, everything's fine, Mom. Everything's fine, Cam's homeboys. No, none of that. Not going to be in no slasher movie, Jack. And if we are in a slasher movie, they coming to get you. The good police coming to get you. And you're going away for a long time, buddy. So, yeah, we, we sorted that out. But no, everything went smooth. There was no issue. Clearly, I'm still here, right? Um, everything was fine. So that's uh, that's Wednesday. So Thursday, we're actually going to uh, the Kendrick Lamar show. We went to this really cool diner, uh, Astro's Diner in Echo Park. Uh, great food. Um, they like an old school diner. It looked like straight out of like Pulp Fiction. Of course, they got like a pie display. The menu changes all the time. Uh, but yeah, really good. I think I had like waffles. Um, really fun experience. Everybody there was super sweet. Again, another like $60 for two people. They taxing out there. Uh, but yeah, really fun. So the rest of the day was more like, it was kind of relaxing, but it was also like a bunch of writing. And I'll save the writing portion until the second half of the show here. Okay. But, uh, Went to the Kendrick show now. Uh, Crypto.com Arena, not Staples Center anymore, but Crypto.com Arena is only uh, maybe five miles, six miles from where we were staying. It took 40 minutes to get there. Um, And then it took like another hour to leave there because of how bad traffic was. They shut down highways for shows for some reason, right? Uh, But, you know, get to the spot. We get there super early. Um... I got my Selena t-shirt on, you know, my concert fit, uh, great seats for the show. We're sitting behind like some high school girls. And so they knew every word to every song and were super hype and super screechy like the whole time, but it was good. You know, drinks way too expensive merch, $60 a t-shirt, you know, they went crazy for it, but Hey, you know, you, you go to these things for these experiences, right? Uh, Kendrick put on a hell of a show, um, bunch of stuff from the new album, bunch of hits like you play money trees and hearing money trees in la is like my one of my bucket list things that was great uh put on a fantastic show man um that was thursday so friday we get to uh this is when we want to do like the dinner so we found this spot in hollywood i call my man teach shout out to teach teach we went to uh we did our undergrad together he's a lawyer in la and I was with him like last summer we linked up in Houston. Uh, but yeah, Tej is he's a different cat. So I was like, yo, find us a spot for uh for dinner in Hollywood. We want to celebrate uh, you know, me getting the job with the ringer. So he says, okay. He gets me back. He's like, all right, this spot's fifteen hundred dollars a table, this spot's two thousand a table. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Cam just got on, okay? just got on all right we can't be doing no you know fifteen hundred dollars a table or nothing like that right now all right so we end up uh finding a spot in hollywood um it was like uh didn't have to pay for the table but they expect like a minimum two hundred dollars so we get there we buy a mad appetizers mad drinks mad food um yeah, it came out to, you know, a pretty decent amount. Uh, fun experience. There's a live show. There was like a, uh, like a Broadway singer. She was great. Um, got to see this dude take his whole family out. It was like 20 people, but his grandma came in the wheelchair and they wasn't equipped to have grandma in the wheelchair. So it took them like, I don't know, like half hour to figure out how to seat her. Uh, went to this bar afterward in Hollywood. Um, I forget the name of it. Regular price bar. It was super fun. Um, ended up hanging out there for a couple of hours. Um, Saturday, ended up uh, doing some more writing and going to my man Tej's crib to watch uh, the UT-UTSA game. I went to UT. Tej went to UT. Rose went to UTSA. So that was really fun. Um, my homegirl Warnessa was there. So what was funny was, uh, I think it was Friday, 
we're we're chilling, getting ready for dinner. And Rose like, yo, can I use the iPad? I'm like, what's going on? She's like, I want to watch Big Brother. So uh, she watches Big Brother. So then we get to Tej's place, and I remember Warnessa's a producer. So I was like, Warnessa, what you working on right now? She was like, oh, you know, Big Brother's about to wrap up. And Rose is, oh, you work on Big Brother? Um, and so they had a good conversation about that. But yeah, that was Saturday. Um, and then Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, early, like three in the morning, popped up, hit the airport and came back. Uh, so yeah, fun trip, four days. Didn't overstay my welcome because, you know, my, I burn out when I'm traveling. But yeah, man, a really good time. No issues other than almost getting hacked up at the Airbnb for shady practices. Uh, but no, everything was, uh, was great. Uh, really fun experience. So yeah, let's, um, Let's come back and let's talk about this latest piece for The Ringer, because I got a story to tell. <laughs> All right. So, um, Dax Harwood, man. First off, shout out to my man, Danny from AEW. Um, he handles their social side and their PR side. Um, he has been great as far as helping me do like these interviews, um, getting stuff cleared, getting graphics cleared. Uh, he's been fantastic. So, Danny, thank you so much. Um, we we got some stuff we're working on right now. Um, but he's been uh, and shout out to AEW in general. They have been like very forthcoming in making sure that, you know, we can speak to the talent. Um, and WWE has been great. Hey, I ain't quite at the at the point to where I can just reach out and ask them, hey, I want to talk to somebody. But, uh, yeah, it's been cool so far. So Dax Harwood. Um it was really important to me for this to be a good article. You always want your work to be good. But, and I've said it, I told Cal, my uh, my editor, I told my friends, I told even Danny. I was like, look, writing about Rick is super easy because, you know, Rick and I are friends. Like, I've hung around Rick for a year. So when it was time to write about him Aside from specifically what he can tell you, like I've wrestled for this long. This is my goal. I want to be a champion here. And this is one of my matches that I really stick out. And my personality when I come out to the ring, like that's all stuff that you pick up on spending time with somebody like over the course of like a year. I knew that the second thing that I wrote was going to be what made me or broke me because I'm going into this almost blind. This is not somebody I have a relationship with. This is not somebody I've communicated with. This is not somebody I can say, like, I know X, Y, and Z about their life that ain't on Wikipedia so I can write about them. So um, when I reached out to Danny, I said, hey, I really want to talk to Dax Harwood. If you're not familiar, Dax Harwood is a wrestler for AEW. He's a tag team wrestler primarily. Uh, him and Cash Wheeler make up the team FTR. They were formerly the revival in WWE. They're the only team that's won WWE's NXT, Raw, and SmackDown titles, as well as the AEW, IWGP, uh, AAA, and ROH tag team titles. Um, another team has won those three titles in WWE, but as far as all of those accomplishments, they're the only team that has done that. So I said I wanted to speak to Dax because this year he's done a lot more singles wrestling and, you know, as somebody who watches wrestling all the time, I'm watching it. I'm like, yo, he's doing something special. Like, even as a primarily tag team wrestler, he is in these matches, like, grabbing the crowd in a way that a lot of tag team wrestlers can't like there's so much about movement and technical prowess and things like that that when you put them in a singles match they don't always elevate themselves to a point where they're bringing out that emotion and feeling but he was doing that on top of that he was cutting these amazing promos um he has a daughter who had a heart condition who um, now since is, is doing great but he went out there before a match and was talking about that and it was just like wow this guy is more than just good hand. This guy is more than just good championship wrestler. Like he's a, a personality. He's a, a spirit. He's a force. So I tell Danny, I want to talk to Dax. He gets Dax. Dax has some time during the day, right? So the first thing I say, cause Danny has to be on the calls with us while we do this, just to make sure nobody says anything crazy. 
the first thing I say is, all right, Danny, you're going to like you pay attention because you're going to see what it's like for me to talk to somebody I don't know. And Dax looks at me. He makes a face. He was like, you don't know me. He's like, you want to interview me? You don't know me? I said, no, 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 no. That is not what I mean. I mean, like, I know Rick, you know, Rick and I are friends. And so the Rick thing was easy. He's like, oh, okay, okay. So, man, we get to talking. We talk for like an hour. And Dax is telling me about, you know, the the wrestlers that have influenced him and why he's, you know, getting in this amount of offense, this amount of offense, and then cutting back and going up and down the road with Cash and how Cash has pulled him out of out of situations and, and he might not always be right, but Cash has his back. And it's all like like really good stuff. But then man, we we're talking and, and Dax is like, he talks about college. And Dax is 38. I'll be 37. So we either graduated high school the same year or he's a year older than me. But we're right there in that same time, right? So like you were talking about graduating college into a recession, which not everybody can deal with. You got to be within like a, a four or five year age range to understand that. What it's like to graduate college and not know, not know what the fuck you're going to do because ain't a whole bunch of jobs out there. So it turns out like, you know, my degrees in English, his minors in English, talk about how much we appreciate teachers. And, you know, he starts talking about his wife and kid and you've just never heard somebody like revere their wife the way that he does. He literally stops the conversation cold to order dinner and to talk, tell her he loves her. Like it's, it's great. You gotta, um, I might let like the actual video fly eventually. I want to clear it with their side to make sure you can see it, but no, nah, man, a great conversation. And that starts to turn into again, his dedication. Like it's like, I can't tell people, what a wrestling move feels like. I can tell them, but they don't know what it feels like to get hit with a wrestling move. They don't know what it's like to be in a submission, but what they do know is what it's like to struggle. What they do know is like what it's like to not know what it's going to be like the next day. Man, he talks about his parents got divorced when he was like 11 years old. Mine got divorced when he when I was five. But then he's like, yo, they still were putting money together to put me through college and they did it right up until they got laid off when I was in college. And my dad still made me promise that I was going to finish before I jumped into wrestling. Like, oh, he talks about how he was a DJ and his wife trusted him and he never gave her a reason not to. So when they had negative $800 in the bank, she was right there with him. And then now they got money and they sold an old house, moving into a new house. Like, It's a great conversation. It really is. And again, he always ties it back to I have these experiences. So when I get in the wrestling ring. I can tell that story about things being difficult. I can tell that story about things not going your way and get the audience to react because that's real life. Man, it was fantastic. It was it was so good. Um, and so he's telling me all this. I originally wanted to write it from a standpoint of to make it seem like there are things he's bad at, but that they're actually good. Like I was going to be like, you know, Dex... Dax reads your tweets and here's that. And, and Dax, uh, is, uh, Dax gives up and turn that into him talking about him not being afraid to submit in matches. But I scrapped it. I wrote 1600 words and scrapped them because I'm like, no, Cam, you're, you're trying to write this in a way that's like linear, but what you're talking about is not linear. You're talking about this man's experiences and jumping back and forth between that and how he feels about life, how he goes about his job. So I'm telling you, I'm in L.A. I'm sitting at a table. I'm overlooking the damn Hollywood. I can see the Hollywood sign from from the balcony. Scrapped it. Cut that whole thing out. Went back and redid it because I was like, nah, man, this story is too good. This story is too good and it's too layered for me to try to tell this linear. So I went back, rewrote the whole thing, man. And it came out great. Like, um, you're first, you're always worried about your editor loving it. As I was writing it, I was like, yo, he, this, he might not feel this. He was like, no, Cam, you wrote this for me. Like you talking about the intricacies of the matches and why he's doing what he's doing and how he wants the audience to feel. That is for me. Check that off. It comes out. Dax reads it and he's like, yo, this is the best thing about me I've ever seen. Like 
because he understood like even though he's telling me a story about wrestling he's really telling me about his life and so we get in there again talk about his wife talk about his kid talk about him and cash talking about how much he appreciates his parents and how they made a way for him like it, it was exactly what he needed and then people know that me and rick have a relationship and so they read this they're like oh okay all right cam you really know what you're doing like you can really write and i was like oh, okay this is great so um it's been a great few days man and um yeah it's been fun like again um i used to write articles for websites and no shade to them i used to write articles for websites for 20 30 dollars man and now like i have a second career in this it is crazy i'm enjoying it i feel like i'm getting better at it um yeah it's great so shout out to dex hardwood man um check that out on the ringer.com um and i'll have links to uh all the stuff i've been working on in the description for the podcast so you'll see that but yeah the ringer.com and now go to the ringer.com and just search the name cameron hawkins and my stuff will come up man it is it's a blessing it is so cool um but yeah shout out to dax uh for letting me make that happen man so uh the next thing that i'm working on uh one thing kind of got canceled unfortunately but um the next thing i'm working on um i got a few names that i reached out about so we'll see when that comes out uh but yeah um outside of that gave you the ringer info uh check me out on twitch i'll probably be on twitch this coming friday night 9 23 my mother's birthday my best friend lee's birthday um so shout out to them man um i'll probably be on twitch it's twitch.tv slash seahawk c-e-c-e-e-h-a-w-k again twitch.tv slash seahawk c-e-e-h-a-w-k but yeah man looking forward to doing more stuff this has been a blast um that's going to do it for this week. Uh, South Congress podcast, episode 131. My name is Cameron. And we're out.